Okay, in, in terms of profitability, uh, we tend to focus more on adjusted EBITDA. Uh, that tends to be where uh, investors look at. Um, it's where we look at internally. Um, and it's where our peers do as well. So to that extent, Q1 was profitable. Um, last year was also profitable for us. Um, you know, we are very focused on cost control, uh, but we're also a growth stock, uh, and we're focused on the huge opportunities that are available in our market. Um, you know, just mentioning on revenue as well, 16% year-on-year revenue growth, growing 25% in all markets outside of Vietnam. So we're very pleased with the result. And just going back to the Vietnamese market, I hate to be the Debbie Downer when I look at these figures, but again, um, you know, 34% decline actually is a bit concerning. And coinciding perhaps also with those tighter lending conditions in the property market that might have also perhaps impacted or, or grazed a property guru as well. Is the outlook for Vietnam perhaps improving, especially after the State Bank of Vietnam perhaps lowered lending rates? There's an effort perhaps to perhaps uh, um, loosen the conditions around that property market. Is uh, are better days around the corner or is that going to still be a bit of a wait on your results moving forward, sir? Um, we certainly uh, think there's positive signs. Um, so you're, you're, you're spot on. The, uh, the opportunity in Vietnam is, uh, is huge. Um, you know, it's 100 million people. Um, I haven't been somewhere where they're quite so obsessed and interested in, uh, in property and, uh, and acquiring property. So it's a very, very exciting market for us. Um, I think the challenges we have are very short term in nature. Uh, you know, to your point, uh, it's intervention by the government. Uh, they've looked, they looked at China quite a lot and see some of the problems that have existed there. So you've seen Evergrande, etc. So they're focused on avoiding that. And, and as a result, they did put in measures to uh, restrict developers from obtaining credit or renewing credit and also to consumers as well. Uh, but we believe this is temporal. Uh, you, know, you, you point to a couple of positive signs. We're seeing the government message coming back that they're going to support uh, the industry. And we do see improvements uh, in the second half and then through into next year. But long term, it's probably our most exciting market. And we're, uh, you know, we think we've got a fantastic uh, brand there, Badon San, and we will uh, continue to grow well in the future. Joe, uh, just on market conditions uh, over here in Singapore and uh, the stamp duty for foreign buyers doubling to 60%, what sort of shakeout, if any, has that created so far in the market? Yeah, actually, relatively little. So, um, you know, the measures the government put in place really are to enable affordability for Singaporeans. Mm. And to that extent, you know, increasing the stamp duty for non Singaporeans. Um, and uh, sorry, increasing stamp duty and other measures for people who are buying their second, third or, or fourth property. But that's not the bulk of the market. The bulk of the market is people buying their first property. Um, there's always a little bit of a jolt uh, when measures come in, um, but ultimately you know, we don't think it's going to have a, a major impact. And in fact, there's, there's a question of sustainability of the property market here. Um, prices can't keep going up and up and up. They need to moderate. So in, in the long run, it's better for society and it, you know, it's probably better for us too.